Hello, and welcome to Monkey's Paper Palooza Craft Corner. Today, we are going to do the second part of our series on resist, and we are going to show more resist techniques with pigment inks and other mediums. In our first video, we talked about using embossing powders and your embossing pad to make a resist on your paper. But there are other mediums that will give you fun resist techniques too, such as a gel medium like Liquitex. Acrylic gesso also makes fun texture that you can also resist ink with, which is a simple thing you can find in any art store. There's also Deco foil transfer gel. And what's fun about this is you can leave it by itself or you can use one of your fun foils that you can get with this company. Like we're going to use today the Brutus Monroe. And you can also use white pigment ink. And what you'll get is a nice shadow, light kind of shadowy effect when you use this as a resist. And we're going to also be using a wonderful Tim Holtz collection stencil. It's called Burlap. So I'm going to take out my Make Art Magnetic Station. And I guess I've been butchering this. It's Wendy Vecchi, somebody said. Though it's very easy sometimes to mispronounce names. So sorry about that. But we're going to put the stencil here. And I pre-put some color on here just to show that if you wanted to put some color underneath your transfer gel, just put a little ink on your stencil. And it will rub the color into your transfer gel. You can also do this with your gel mediums and also uh, with your gesso and also have some fun colors underneath. So a fun technique, you can use it, use it this way and leave it without doing your resist technique to add color to your gel without having to buy colored gels. Because I understand gels can be expensive they are costly, especially if you need to get like every color of the rainbow to make some fun techniques. So here's a quick, easy way to add color to your medium and get a fun colored technique. And you'll see the color when I pull off it. See, isn't that cool? So you get that fun kind of ombre effect. So we're going to do this again. This time we are going to do this with the Liquitex. And you can do this in a glossy or matte. They have different kinds of them and you're going to do the same thing you do with the other one except this is of course going to be showing you totally clear and now with the pigment so you can go with a brush and do it or since i have a small pad i am just going to directly sponge it on with my hero arts unicorn white pigment ink and it is just fantastic and it's going to leave a faint kind of shadowy effect which is very nice versus some of the bright things you could get with the other colors. So it gives a fun little faint, almost like sun bleached look. Now we are going to add the acrylic gesso and just like the other ones, you're just going to do it. Now what's nice about this is if you leave it really thick, like I'm going to do, you're going to get some really cool texture. You can leave it really smooth too, if you wanted to and let it dry very smooth and clean. But I'm not worrying about the smooth and clean. I want the fun texture. So to show that you could do it with some texture is fantastic also. So we're going to leave it a little thick. So the first one we're going to do is going to be the pigment ink panel. Now, this is what we did with the unicorn white. And make sure it's completely dry so that you don't rub in your pigment ink into it. Now as you see, you're going to slightly see the imprint of the stencil. Isn't that fun? So I am using Spice Marmalade Abandoned Coral and I believe it is Raspberry Preserves in my panel today. And this is from Distress Inks. No, not Raspberry Preserves. Picked Raspberry. And as you see, you see that faint effect, which is really cool. So instead of doing a clean cut thing, I'm going to do a little kind of abstract blend in here. And let them kind of 
kind of do a fun effect here. Because you know what? We can do different techniques and make a very beautiful panel. And then I see that it shows so much better with the abandoned coral. You can see it a lot better. But you can see where the pigment ink is shining right through. Now the trick I do is I put my little sponge things on the bottom. I take a clear dot, Velcro dot, take the rough part, and I can stick my things right to the bottom of it. That way I always have a sponge ready. I also do this on the top of my Distress Oxides also, so they're always close by. That way I don't have to like try to search or have some sort of storage device to hold just my sponges. I know exactly what color goes with what sponge. So isn't that fun? Now, you're like, what about the residue? So I take a clean sponge that I have from my mini blending tool, and I just go over it again. And what it's going to do is it's going to take the color off the pigment ink a little better and blend it in. Now this is the acrylic gesso. Like I said, when it dries, you get a very fun texture. I think that I like this technique better with the oxides only because they're chalkier. I feel that the dye inks almost kind of sink in more to the white and are not as resisted as well. So note for that, especially with the texture, that more chalky ink sometimes fits better in there. And it actually goes on easier too because it's more smooth compared to the dye inks that you may have with your distress inks. So this time I'm going for faded jeans, broken china, and cracked pistachio. And once again, I'm going to go over with my clean dauber, and I'm just going to go over it, clean sponge it, just to get that white resist. And you can see that fun texture. This is the clear gel medium, the Liquitex, and you get that beautiful shine with it. So I'm taking fossilized amber, spice marmalade, and fired brick to make a really fun color with this. And what's nice is you get a little shine. So very similar to the kind of technique you're gonna, you get with a clear embossing powder, you'll get it with this. So depending on what you have in your supplies, if you're a crafter and you use embossing powders, of course it's gonna be easier to use that. But if you are not someone that has embossing powder, but you have gel mediums, you can even probably do this with Mod Podge. Just make sure to clean off your sponge with all these gel mediums and clean off your stencils really quickly. And that way you don't have this stick to your stuff. But that's just a little tip. Now this is the one I did with the deco foil. Now that medium by itself will be very similar to the Liquitex. It has the same shine and it comes on clear. Now the one thing I'm going to say this has that gives you a little bit of an upper hand is it remains sticky enough that you can deco foil after. Now I was going to do an ombre effect but then I realized I had the ombre effect already. So we're going to just stick with fire brick. That way the oranges and the pinks kind of stick out with the red in the background. But we're gonna have a little fun with this when we're done. So I'm gonna clean this off once again with my brush, actually not brush, my sponge, and we're gonna clean it off. So that is pretty by itself. Now, you can leave it by itself like this, or if you wanted to have fun and put some deco foil on it, go for it. So I'm taking this Tide Pool by Bruce Monroe, and I'm going to stick it through my Scotch thermal laminator between the two sheets of parchment paper. That's what you usually use when you do this. And I'm gonna feed this through a couple times. I 
because I like to make sure it's really adhered. So it's probably good now, but the more times you put it through, the better sticking you're going to have to it. And you make sure, also make sure that all these areas got hit. So I think I'll do one more time just to make sure that it is there. There we go. I think we're good. But look at that beautiful shine you can have on that. So a little thing. You could do like I did just plain, or you can add some more fun color and more detail to it. But all these were a great way to resist your ink. I have seen people do it also with a plain embossing fluid on glossy cardstock. There's another way too. I just didn't have any glossy cardstock in stock, nor did I want to really try it. I want to try more gel mediums and so once again, I'm going to take my Make Art Station here, and I'm going to use this to align my panels. Now, I cut these down to get the excess off, because I find that sometimes I don't like that border on the sides of my stencil. So I cut it all off so that it's a nice, even panel. But I did make another panel to put behind them, just to give it some extra dimension. So we're also going to add some Ofre cotton twill ribbon. These I find at Walmart. I can never find them online so I can never give you guys a good link but check your local store. They're great for adhering to cards because they're matte. So they don't show any imperfections like satin wood which is kind of a cool thing. And I've also cut Best Wishes this is from Spellbinders, and I'm also using my Spellbinders tool in one to poke out the less bits of it. Now, I wanted to stick this, I think, on the ribbon, but I don't know if it's going to work because of the texture. So I'm going to try it, and if it doesn't work, we will improvise in a different way. So I am using my Zig Two Way Glue. I sometimes like this glue a little bit better because it is repositionable because it's it stays tacky, which is kind of cool versus some of the other wet glues that are just wet and don't ever stay tacky. So it's depending on what project you're doing, it's a great thing. I especially love it for adhering gems because if my glue dries a little bit by the time I get the gem on there, at least I know I have a little bit of time before it loses its adhesion. So I'm going to try sticking on this. I'm just afraid that it's going to pull up. But we'll use our magnets and we'll see what happens. I'm going to stick this onto the bail. It did not work with the letters so I ended up putting them down on the bottom which I found left them a little less bubbled up. So I'm going to stick this very fun coppery, almost rose gold panel with that wonderful resist background on there. And I'm going to add some of my magenta mermaid sequins because I feel like the colors are going to go really well with this. And I put this all on a craft cardstock card form and it's going to be really pretty all together. I've been showing a lot of very fun, simple cards. Because, you know, sometimes you just need something fun, quick, and simple. And backgrounds usually are the best way. So I have a piece of blue Ofre ribbon this time. I love this ribbon. Like I said, it doesn't show imperfections as bad, so I find it works a lot better than a lot of the satin. I like using usually mesh ribbons or this kind of ribbon because gauze grain can sometimes show you a lot of imperfections and so can in satin. But for some reason, even with this tape roller on the back, it doesn't bubble up and it's fantastic. And I love that it's the perfect width for that tape runner so I can make a very fun ad adhesive backed ribbon. 
Isn't that fun? Now, this one I think is small enough. This is Congratulations, also by Spellbinders. I'll put the die kits down below so that you can pick these up if you need them in your collection. But this one is small enough. It's the same size almost as a ribbon, so it's easy to put it on there. So we're going to add some adhesive on the back of this silver pearl panel. And we're going to stick it right onto this card. This is a perfect card for someone who's graduating or for weddings coming up. The colors are very pretty. And I'm going to take some Aurora Borealis rhinestones. They are four millimeter. They are a fun kind of additive to add to this card because they have some fun sparkle in them. Now this is on that panel with the acrylic gesso. So you can see that kind of fun 3D texture that we got by letting it dry fit. Some areas dried really light and some kind of stood up more. So you get a kind of cool texture based look to it. Now for this panel, the one with the white pigment ink, I am going to go with a satin ribbon, and it's a little bit of a, have a metallic edge to it, which is really cool. But I want to try to get this as close to the bottom of the panel as I can, because I almost want it to be the bottom. It might be easier to do this on the top. And now I'm throwing sequins everywhere. I'll try to get this as straight as I can. Sometimes it's hard, even with this lining up with satin, because it sits weird. Oh, that one's a little crooked. Let me quickly fix it. And I think we're good. All right, so. For this one, I've got the word hide. This is also from Spellbinders. These are magnets to hold down the high, and then I need to oh, also get this little dot for the high. So I could, if I wanted to omit it, put a rhinestone or sequin. But for this one, I wanted to take out some glossy accents and go over the high, just to give us a little bit of gloss and kind of pull it in a different direction as the background panel. Because the color is so similar, I didn't want it to fade in. So that makes it just a little bit more bright in the background. I kind of made it oof. Now, if you're gonna put this on a panel like I did, do not do your glossy accents before. And I did do that. But I can lift it up kind of quickly and do a little bit on the sides where I need to once it dries. So a quick little tip there. <laughs> so for now, I'm going to put some little dots of this glossy accents on there just to kind of tie in the fun colors in the high. And there is your fun little glossy high, as well as the dots that will come up very clear when we're done. Now for this last panel, this is the panel with the fun tied wool foiling on it. We are going to add some silver mesh ribbon. And this is a fun mesh. Absolutely a mesh ribbon. It is so cool. Also by Ofray. A lot of these ribbons, make sure you have them at your local store because, of course, there's no way to really order them online. So I cut out Thanks, also by Spellbinders, and I'm putting this on some silver glitter paper. So it have the silver glitter paper Thanks, and also the background will be the same glitter paper. I love this paper because it's a very fine glitter, so it doesn't fall off, which is something that with a lot of glitter papers you have an issue with. This being embedded, it doesn't fall off, so you always keep that fun glitter. 
So we're going to put, like I said, this on a panel of glitter paper, just the same one as the words. And we are going to then add some of our 5 millimeter silver flat glitter sequins to this. little bit of this SIG 2A glue. So it kind of ties in the fun glitter that is there. Love that. Isn't that fun? So here's a fun, easy way to do more fun resist techniques with simple products you may have in your supplies already or can easily find at any of your art and supply stores. So great way to use your resist techniques in a new way. So if you like this video, please check out the last video as well as one specially curated just for you. And like always, we welcome you to like, subscribe, and ring for notifications using this icon. And also check out our website as well as our Instagram and Facebook and Pinterest pages.